All right, guys, welcome back to the segment that you guys are loving so much. Again, I appreciate the comment section, so we're gonna dive right into it. First watch we're gonna look at is a brand new Meteorite Pepsi. And let me tell you something really interesting about this watch. Every one of these watches that we're getting in, the dials have such a different pattern. So we get a lot of people that request specific patterns, or I've actually, I'm dealing with a client right now that wasn't happy with the pattern they received on a watch. So they're actually requesting to trade in the watch for the exact same watch, hoping to find a more aggressive pattern, if you would call it. But some people maybe like the more flat patterns or the more aggressive crisscross patterns. Obviously this is made out of Meteor, so every dial you're gonna get is not gonna be like the last dial. This pattern is actually really interesting. It has a very aggressive spot out of all of the dials on the, you know, right next to Rolex, it almost looks like it's damaged, but it's not because it looks like it's exposing a ton of like wire per se, but it's not actually wire, but it looks like it's just exposing a completely different side of the rock. So as the rest of the dial looks very consistent and very minute. Same thing at the, right above the date. It's like showing a lot of like strong patterns on this dial, which looks really nice. This watch was sold to us as brand new. So of course you guys know what I'm gonna do. We're gonna look for those features to see that it is brand new. It is new, it's got some hair lines from handling, but other than that, this looks like a very new watch. So the one thing that I can I, I want to point out on a, on a uh, brand new watch is really want to follow the grain. If you look at the grain on the class, it's very rich and it's very, it's almost like in a sense like an AP. When you're looking at an AP, it has that very obvious deep, you know, deep grooves in the, in the polish. So it has that really rich texture. Rolex has, I would say like 20 to 25% of that type of texture, but it's there. It should be very straight, nice deep grooves under the loop. You know, when you guys are looking at this, you, sit, you should see that nice straight pattern. There's no crisscross from a polishing wheel. There's no overrun into the high polish area. You know, throughout the bracelet, you don't want to find any of that, which if you guys ever seen a repolished watch, which hopefully one of these watches have been refinished, I can show you the difference. Nine out of 10 times, there's going to be runoff from the polishing wheel because they're actually taping off the sections that they're trying to polish. So whenever they tape off one area and then they tape off the other, there tends to be an overlap from the polishing wheel, which you will never see that with Rolex. That's good news there. So I think this watch is actually indeed true new. I don't see any issues with the watch. There's still some factory tape, so that's good to see. Just a little on the dirty side, you know, just from handling lots of, um, just lots of grime from people's finger and oil from our hands. Just to notate, so I had a guy from the AD tell me that if they don't take the stickers off of these, they get fired. I don't know how that, <laughs> how true that is, but there's still some watches out there. So every time I see a fully taped Rolex now, I'm just like, damn, who lost their job? There you go. That is a Pe Meteorite Pepsi 126719BLRO. Brand new, just in. Next watch. So here's a watch I took in. This is a funny watch. Nothing wrong with it per se. It's a 16520 Zenith Daytona with the tritium dial. And the way you know it's tritium dial is just for a, just quickly glancing at the dial is you want to see the t Swiss made T. So the T means tritium, obviously. The later dials towards the A serial, P serial, and those ranges will only have a Swiss made Super Luminova dial. It's kind of one of these watches that kind of, uh, it struck a nerve with me in a sense because it is so complete, but it does not have the warranty papers. So that is just really annoying that the one thing this watch is missing is the warranty papers. So, but it is overall a very nice watch. Yeah, everything looks good, dial looks good. Yeah, this one has a nice tritium reaction. Bezel looks pretty nice. A lot of problems with 16520s over the years. The bezels tend to get over polished. This one's actually pretty nice shape. Doesn't look too over polished. Uh, it has all the ink in it, so it doesn't have any blind numbers. Everything else looks good. This watch has been repolished at some point in its life, just by looking at the grain. You can see we're in some areas where the uh, grain kind of turns away from the watch. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty nice. Band's a little on the loose side, but it's not terrible. It's very acceptable. I would gladly wear this watch. Actually, I probably, you know, will buy this watch for myself. This might land. I don't know. Let me look at it. Pretty nice overall condition. I'm not really too worried about it. One thing I look for when I am looking at these older watches, and this is one thing you can do, is start from the outside of the crystal and go work your way in because just glancing at the outside of the crystal, I'm already finding chips in the crystal. Crystal. Again, there's only one. It's really at the one o'clock area. It's not too big, not too big of a deal. Gives it that little bit of character, but when, obviously when they start getting really chewed up, I start having a problem with that. Like I said, this watch has everything with it, but the papers. So I'll show you guys what it all comes with. Even has the original bezel protector. These are really hard to find. It has the serialized hang tag. Even has a hang tag from the dealer that states the retail price was uh, $5,100. That's how much this watch was brand new back in 1996. It's got the 
original hang tag, red hang tag, green hang tag, correct booklets. So something I can teach you guys about these booklets is you can actually pop the back of these open and find out what year this watch um, was born with. If this is a correct booklet, it'll actually have the date code right here. So this actually is not the right book as it is from 1989. This is actually a very expensive booklet because I'm not gonna open it or I talk about it, but basically it'll all be floating Cosmo dolls. Yeah, there you go, look. The first one's a porcelain. <laughs> so it's got floating Cosmo. Check that out. All the, all the watches in this booklet are floating Cosmo because this is a 1989, so this will be the first year these watches were released. That's really cool. So this book's pretty rare. It really belongs to a, uh, to a very early floating Cosmo Daytona doll. So if somebody has a full set and they're missing this specific book, it's gonna be hard to find. So somebody out there probably needs this book. Lucky for me, I have multiples of these so I can correct it and find the right year for this watch. Um, but at least we have the correct hang tags and everything else. We'll pull that booklet out of this deal and find the right booklet for it that's closer to 96. But typically you can date booklets for the mid 90s watches. So you can, it'll actually have the date codes on them. This is actually correct. So right here at the bottom, it actually says 1996. So that's one way to tell, you know, if the set's actually matching or was the set hobbled together. What is this? This is a original appraiser <laughs> appraisal from 1999 stating the watch is worth $5,100. It's worth a little bit more than that now. Next watch, uh, 116610 LV Hulk just came in uh, from one of my clients. It is a brand new Hulk, never worn. It is complete with everything. It is a 2018 model. He is the original owner, so that's pretty cool that he held it so long without selling it. This at one point, he could have sold this for damn near $40,000 and he still held on to it. Prices have dropped quite a bit. Uh, this watch right now in today's market, we are selling it for 25,000. You can find it on our website if it's still there at the time this video drops. So we're gonna check it out, make sure it's good to go. Make sure it is true new, yes it is. And I believe my client, he did say he bought it brand new. It's in his name. He said he put it away, wanted to keep it new and he indeed did keep it new. I don't see any sign of any type of wear and tear. There's still some stickers on the class. It has the original crown sticker that's holding the crown together. And this is definitely a piece I would call true new and complete down to the bezel protector. And this one's not missing the papers, unlike the last watch we just saw. It is what it is. I never drink um, espressos black, but here we are. All right, next watch. Where did this watch come from? Okay, so the next watch, uh, looks like we bought this watch. True new, 126, 200, green mint. So let's check this watch out, make sure it is what it is. Definitely true new. Again, when we're looking at true new watches, you wanna check the grain, you wanna check the quality of the polish on the out outer skirts of the watch, check the high finish for any kind of abrasions or any kind of inconsistencies. I mean, this watch is 100% true new. I don't see any issues. I can't find any dust on this one. So yeah, 126, 200, a uh, quick review of this watch. A lot of watch for the money, in my opinion. They are still trading a little over retail. This watch retails for around $7,250, 7350 I'm not sure what the Jubilee adds to it, but it's right under $8,000. Right now, current market retail price and the secondary market, roughly trading around ten dollars to $11,000 with the Jubilee bracelet. So the next watch we have, 126610LV. This is a Kermit or Sermit Starbucks. I've heard many names for this watch. To me, it's a 126610LV, but to each his own. I don't know how this watch was sold to us. Uh, wasn't given details, so we'll just tell you what it is. Oh my God, there's a nasty ding on this. I hope it's not new, because it got whacked. The bottom left lug got dragged around on something, because it got, it's got some damage. I'm not sure if somebody mishandled it. Maybe they dropped it. It happens, you're showing your watch, you're showing off your watch to a friend, and you hand it to them, and they just throw it up in the air, and then heel side kick it. I remember when I had my very first Rolex, somebody uh, dropped it in front of me, and it was a very painful experience. IWC. So this looks to be a 36 millimeter IWC Pilots watch. I'm not too familiar with IWCs. I do understand how they're supposed to be polished and I do understand more or less the different lines of models they have, like the big Pilots and the Portofinos and so forth. This is a very small petite watch, but it is a simple date and time Pilots watch on a strap, but it also comes on a bracelet. Definitely pre-owned. It's never been polished before though. They're kind of like Rolex. They have perfected their finish, so it's really hard to match IWC finish. So they kind of have this really nice deep grain in their polish and they also have chamfers. If you look at the edges of the um, 
the lugs, they're chamfered out kind of like Rolex, except they have far more aggressive chamfers and they have a really, really nice quality to their finish. So, you know, definitely give them that for their quality for the finish. Dial looks good. This is not a IWC buckle. It's an aftermarket buckle because it's not marked uh, as it should be. This has a plane on the back. Oh God, you want to talk about, see, this is what I'm talking about. Grime. Like, we're talking about grime. There's a lot of grime on the case back where you could just see where it wasn't washed and it's just collected dirt and nastiness, sweat, fo hair follicle, whatever you want to call it. It's all back there. This watch is going to be simply washed and it'll get rid of all of that. Just to show you guys real quick, this is the correct bracelet for it. It probably wears bigger on the bracelet, but that is the style bracelet that it comes with. Um, looks to be in excellent condition. This is from my client trade-in for the dual time that we just sold. And this is a 2016 AP 15500. This is what I'm talking about. When they refinish a watch on an AP, they lose that lust. Just from a glance, I can tell. Yeah, this is not refinished. So the one thing that's really easy to notate on AP is like the one thing that people are very, very much attracted to is that original finish. Because when you look at a AP 15400 in the light, the light really has a way of dancing off the surface of the bracelet and so forth, just when you re-rotate it very slowly. It's like catching each link individually. And that just gives it such a nice overall appearance. And when you refinish it, it just kills it. It kind of brings it down to a subs level. It's not going to be the same ever again. Now there are guys out there that can, you know, that are masters of their craft that can bring that type of polish back out, but it's not, it's not cheap. If you guys ever out there need a refinish specifically to the factory, I can do it for you. It's not cheap. Uh, so just make sure you really love that watch because it really starts at around 1500 bucks. But I'm telling you, it is the guy is a, uh, master at his craft. He can definitely bring back the finish to me. And this is just my opinion to each his own. His finish looks better than AP's finish. It just brings back that lust, but it even brings it back in a better way. It's a 3D dial. It's called a waffle dial. The hands are very, very crisp and clean with no type of abrasions or any kind of surface issues. The printing on the word Audemars Piguet, automatic, are very, very crisp and delicately applied, whereas the aftermarket dials, fake dials, etc., will have a very blotch system going where they're not clean at all. It doesn't look good. And same thing goes with the date wheel. One thing that's really cool about AP are the Again, the use of chamfers are very aggressive on this watch. The chamfers are really found throughout the entire bracelet, throughout the side of the case, in between the links, around the bezel edges. Just tons of chamfers. Again, that just helps with that shine this watch gives off from the factory. I mean, it just really gives it a lot of a uh, lot of attractiveness. This is one question I get asked a lot. How do I know if the bezel is original? One thing to look for and notate is that most of the time the uh, screws are actually going to be slightly recessed below the bezel. They shouldn't be sticking above the bezel. They should be just ever so slightly recessed, and they should be a perfect fit. Uh, there shouldn't be any gaps or anything. So if you guys see this in the microscope, you'll notice that the screws are very perfectly aligned. They follow the same pattern as the dial. There you have it, 15400, 2016. Current market price for these watches as of this week are gonna be roughly around $33,000, $35,000 retail. Wholesale, they're really being purchased at around 28 to 30,000. What we have here is a Tudor Black Bay 58, complete box and papers. It is a 39 millimeter. I noticed that it is ever so slightly smaller than a sub. Brace is not actually riveted. It's a faux rivet, but because in, in reality, it is just an oyster brand with the look. So again, Tudor is really a brand reserved to really show off Rolex's heritage and show off how the watches have patinaed and kind of bring back that 60s and 70s vibe into a more modern design that is still retaining its sleek design yet having that history from the 60s and 70s present as well. The red triangle from the original 5508, so forth. The snowflake hands being that the original Tudors were snowflake hands. So it's a very cool watch if you really appreciate those type of heritage points. And the fact that they use chamfers on the Tudors is great. The dial layout is still fantastic. Obviously the patina is there. I love that it's an off-white Luminova dial and not a pure white. You know, again, it really kind of makes it feel like an older watch, but it's not an older watch. Things I don't like about the watch is the overuse of the heritage. I would say it's cool to have some of that DNA there, but it's, it is kind of overused in a sense. I don't think they're nearly as comfortable as Rolex. I really wish they would have the Rolex style buckle, but with the Tudor stamping like they used to do, because the only difference back then between the buckles of a Tudor and a Rolex were just the markings. Everything else was pretty much the same. So now they've completely changed the design of the buckle where it's 
totally different buckle design. It doesn't have a glide lock. It just has a simple adjustment. I'm not a fan necessarily of the wearability of the watch, but otherwise the uh, aesthetics of the watch, not bad. It's pretty nice. If you throw it on a NATO strap, you know, of course I think it looks good. This is a great daily watch and the entry point of this watch is roughly around $3,000. It's really favorable to anybody getting into watches. This is the perfect entry level watch. You can get in for around three to $4,000 for brand new. Pre-owned is right around three or less. And we have one more watch to show you guys. I don't even know what's going on with this watch. I just know Jimmy said throw it on the time graph. Apparently it's losing time. So we're gonna check it. This is an um, uh, Omega Constellation. Look, I don't know much about these older constellations. I'll be the first to say. <laughs> Looping out this dial, which I did a little earlier, like, just a minute ago, it looks horrible. So it, probably a refinished dial in my opinion, because I hope Omega's quality wasn't this poor from back in the day. I mean, I imagine you can see just how blotchy the dial is. Everything about the dial is very blotchy. It just looks poorly put together. Nine out of 10, I'm pretty sure this style is aftermarket. Even the star is not lined up. It's kind of leaning to the right. Overall, the quality of the paint on the minute markers are just all over the place. It looks like it was almost done by hand. I don't know, but let's see. Let's put it on the time graph, see what it's doing. I wound it up. So it's got great amplitude. It is running at 19.8 beats per hour. Amplitude is 235 degrees. That's not bad. It's just losing 30 seconds a day. <laughs> so not the end of the world, but it is what it is. I don't know what Jimmy wants to do with this watch. I don't know anything about this watch. I just know that it's running 30 seconds slow a day. We'll probably send it off, get service, and that'll be it. Thank you guys so much for watching this segment. If you enjoyed this segment, let us know in the comments below if there's any changes you'd like to see to this segment. We're always open to criticism. Otherwise, we love doing it, and we'll see you next time. Where's Jimmy Chu? What's going on, Jimmy? Hey, man. How's it going? Going wonderful. Busy day. We're open Monday and Tuesday. Day, and we're gonna be closed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday because of the US holiday. Thursday's Thanksgiving. Friday is Black Friday here, which I think people are gonna be much more busy buying other things than watches. And tomorrow, just Thanksgiving Eve, we we don't think it's gonna be that busy. So it's been a really busy day. We had eight packages come in. I think you guys saw uh, Marco verify those, authenticate those. And then we had 12 watches going out today. So in terms of the business, I wanna make these segments much more engaging and shorter because you guys want to see the watches and that's really at the end of the day what we want to promote too. Obviously the business side of things, I'll give you guys a quick update. Still working with our corporate partners um, at Blue Bolt on our website, trying to generate more e-commerce with different customized checkout process, which is done, but now design and format. We actually had three watches selling off our website today with no sales rep, which is great. Increasing the e-commerce there. It's been a full sprint because December 3rd is the Big 12 Championship football game and the American Athletic Conference Championship football game, which is what we've been building up towards. So getting all the marketing there completed, getting flights booked to wherever the American Championship is. They still don't know where it is because there's one game on Saturday that would determine the location. So we're scrambling in terms of getting the digital assets created for that. Adjusting on the fly with different changes in staff. Obviously Trent is no longer here. We did come to an agreement on hiring a sales manager. So they're actually coming in as a C-suite employee. So I don't want to belittle them with a sales manager, but their primary job is going to be to manage the sales team, to create a company culture, company vision, to do leadership training, to do onboarding process, to recruit, to, to hire. And by the way, the sweepstakes is still going on. That's going to go through the end of the year. So December 31st is going to be the last day for everyone that um, is participating. Again, our apparel is open to international shipping now. Unfortunately, you won't qualify if you're international just because of the legal hurdles it has to be us only but you can still buy our apparel it is on its way i got off of the phone with our manufacturer in portugal that apparel is on a boat being shipped here so we're super excited about that it's been a busy time let's see what jai has for this showroom showcase huh welcome back to another showroom showcase i want to start it out this week and actually show you what i'm wearing we got the wimbledon dial date just the one two six three three four pick this up for my personal piece i don't know just enjoy it i haven't had a wimbledon dial stainless for a while so we're gonna wear one for a little bit but let's go into our first watch here with the holidays coming up, I know a lot of people need gifts, and guys, I know your girls definitely want to get a gift. Let's go with our first one here. I think this is a great piece to go with just about any girl. Rolex Datechest, 36 millimeter two-tone, the Roman dial. Let us know what you think of this. This is a great piece to have for anyone. It can be a men's watch, but it looks really good on a ladies' piece as well, and this is going for $5,500, so not bad. So $5,500, get you a nice, nice gift. Next piece, kind of excited on this one. This is a brand that obviously picked up a lot of traction throughout the 
throughout that kind of intense bull run that we had there. And it's one that's kind of coming back down to price. And I think it's a really good buy is getting anything with a Vacheron right here. So this is a really cool piece. Obviously you can tell you got your power reserve, got the day of the week and then what day of the month we're in. So let us know, is this something you would rock? Also, do you like leather bands? So I know either people love them or hate them. I'm kind of indifferent on it. I don't know if I would really wear it. It's just, uh, I have a leather, leather band watch and it's the one I wear the least. So let me know what you would do. Would you go leather or do you got to go with the metal bracelet? Condition's extremely good. You can tell through here, it's extremely clean and we have this available at $18,000. Cool, let's go with the next one right here. I think you can never go wrong with a gold Rolex. So we have right here a Cellini. This is a great, great piece and we have this one at a really, really good price. So this is available at $7,000. Sticking with that leather band, Personally, I like the Rolex leather band a little bit more than the Vacheron. I don't know, maybe it's just because the rose gold with this kind of brown. I think it flows really well. And then you got that nice buckle right there with the little Rolex crown. What would you wear between these two actually? If you were to pick one up, are you going Vacheron or are you going Rolex? Oh, that's kind of a Clash 2 uh, Titans right there. Both of them on a nice leather strap. Between the two, I'm gonna go Rolex just because I like the Cellini a lot and it's just a clean piece. Last watch for the day, this is a really cool piece. This is one that I know a lot of people Either they know a lot about it or they don't really know much about it. It is the Aqua Terra. So I'll tell you the reference number, but it's way too long to ever repeat. This is the green dial. So it's one of the more sought after ones. And I think it was released last year or the year before. I'm not exactly sure. I know this one's a 2022. It's a complete set and we will sell it for $4,000. Been lightly worn. There's a few headlines on there. We can always get that touched up before selling. 41 millimeter is actually really cool. So the Mill Gauss obviously is a watch that holds up against a lot of gauses as far as magnetic fields. I think that one's up for a thousand gauses and this one is rated for 15,000. So it's just obliterates the Mill Gauss and it's really, really nice. I actually have one of these in my personal collection. I have it on the rubber strap. I really like it. I think the metal is extremely nice and it's a good piece to pick up because you can always pick up a rubber strap later or even put it on a NATO strap. I've been thinking about getting one myself. One watch collection, I think for 4,000, you're just knocking it out of the park. So thank you again for watching another showroom showcase. Let us know what you think out of these watches. Which one are you gonna go with? And if you're gonna go get someone a special gift, what kind of Rolex would you get them? Would it be a ladies piece or are you gonna get something for yourself this holiday season? Other than that, man, I hope you have a good one. We'll see you soon. All right, we're back with another segment of Ask Us Anything. We are sorry that we missed last week. We had some technical difficulties with the sound. We shot it, but there's an air vent and uh, we just couldn't block out that noise. So what do you have for us this week, Matt? Sathish asks, question for next week. Why is it that Rolex and AP sales rep demand a lot more than say a gray market sales rep? I don't know what you mean by that. Do you mean from like a salary or commission standpoint? If that's the case, it's probably just because it's a more desirable brand. No different than being a sales rep for, you know, Audi and Mercedes versus a Lexus or I guess on a smaller scale, Toyota or Honda. One brand has more appeal to it. It's a great question. I've never worked in the retail space, like the AD space, so can't answer that well. Paul Demert says, Marco, keep doing the authentication videos. Any hints as to what to look for on any watch, not necessarily a Rolex, right out of the box? First thing I always tell people to look at is look at the symmetry of the watch and make sure everything you're looking at makes sense. Does the dial scream fake? And what I mean by that is everything look aligned properly, really crisp, very legible. Does it look easy to read or does it look blotchy and does it look kind of funny? If you get an instant feeling where it looks funny, your intuition at looking at a watch is pretty good right out of the gate. There's a good chance if you're looking at a watch and if something says it looks funny, it probably is. Everything from the numbers, the way everything's engraved, the shape of the watch should be very symmetrical and it, looks, it should look very clean and very easy to look at. If it looks goofy or almost like the Rolex crown or something is cartoony looking or the crown guards are just too big or the crown sticks out too far, you might be dealing with a fake watch. Hamed Shafapay says, question for Jimmy. Switching the POS to an open source, is this because you want specific features that you need a web developer for. Do you use the same e-commerce platform or have a separate POS for store walk-ins and e-commerce sales? So our POS system is on Shopify. Same with our e-commerce platform, which is closed end. Closed end, for those who don't know, is really kind of a box that they put you in and you kind of have to play within that box. We want an open source network. Uh, that way we can really evaluate all of their opportunities. So for example, merchant services. Right now we're using Shopify Payments, which is a white label version of Stripe, which has fixed rates. If we were on the open market or on an open source platform, we can negotiate or work with different providers to get a much more or much lower merchant service fee. So that benefits the client and us. So just little things like that, where you can start to kind of play around with 
different merchants, different vendors to really improve your product versus playing within the square that you've been allowed for. Epijoro1 says, Marco, I see vintage watches that I like, particularly sports Rolex, but most are on straps. What's your opinion on using replacement oyster bracelets on vintage sports Rolex? This is actually something I highly recommend doing, believe it or not. If you are wearing a 1960s or 1970 with a folded link bracelet, chances are that bracelet isn't going to be very durable in the long run of ownership. So what I'd always recommend is going to find, going out there and buying a 93150 or a heavier duty version of that bracelet that you have on there just for wearability purpose, but always be sure to keep your original bracelet on standby with your watch in case you decide to sell it one day. Don't ever lose it because finding another one is very, very impossible. V.com says, question, if you guys ever created a grand caliber signature watch, which two brands would you partner with? For me, I would love to partner with Tag. For some reason, I know Tag gets a bad rep for some. If you compare it to all the watches that we sell, it tends to be what people consider like an entry level. But I love Tag. Uh, I love the history with Carrera. I'm a big Porsche guy, and I'm gonna get ridiculed for this, but I love Longa and Son. But there's a particular way to say it. But yeah, Longa and Son. Listen, if I'm gonna go down that route, let's just cut out the middleman. Let's just build our own watch from the ground up and we can control the, the narrative there. We can have the complications. We can have the different type of watches. We'd have dress, we'd have sport models. I don't know, it, that, that's a rabbit hole we could really dive down. That's an interesting question. Maybe one day when our budgets are a little wider, we can look into that. But for now, we're happy selling the brands that are doing all the work for us. Don Commando says, have you thought about creating a salesperson specific order link so that the customer doesn't have to click on the salesperson's name upon checkout? We've thought about that. We've been working with that behind the scenes or that concept. It's not that big of a task to do. Or it's not that big of a hurdle to overcome, but it's just on a list of like 20 other things that we're trying to accomplish. So it will be done. It's just knocking through some of the other things that we want to do to improve our website as well. But it's a great suggestion. It's something that we're going to do. Lordicon says, yes, the microscope was a must. Question for Marco. How did you get started in your watch journey and knowledge? How do you know so much about authenticating? There's a very simple way to put it. I spent hours and hours upon hours reading all types of watch forums, everything from Rolex forums, vintage forums, even down to these replica forums, because those guys on those type of forums were very, very interesting. You know, they're very, very nerdy about what's supposed to be what. It seemed to be more information on those type of forms than sometimes on the actual forms because on one side, you have guys that respect a real watch for what it is, but then you have guys on other forms that are trying to dissect what it is. So I kind of gathered up a lot of information from a lot of different points and views. I think forms, for my knowledge, and this is back in the days when I was a valet, I spent all my downtime just reading about watches, reading about different types of movements and how everything kind of came together for a watch. It was almost obsessive, multiple years of being in a rabbit hole. And I still am to this day, I still find myself in rabbit holes regarding vintage watches, even modern watches I'll go down some rabbit holes. User GI9 says just wondering if anyone buys your watches do the customers get free grand caliber apparel? I wish that's the case but unfortunately you do not get free grand caliber apparel. Maybe if you're a super great client and you bought numerous watches maybe we start giving some I've always wanted to think about like a reward system for our loyal clients. And so maybe that's a thought process, but unfortunately right now, it's not something we're just giving away. You have to purchase it. But like I said, if you're a great client of ours, which we have many of them, there are things that we've given clients in the past, such as bourbon, wine, tickets to sporting events. So yeah, maybe, maybe that could be a, a a loyalty program type of thing. That's another week here at Grand Caliber. It's been a short week, obviously with the holidays here in the US with Thanksgiving. We hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. We're excited about what's gonna happen this last month here in December. It's the holiday season. It's usually the biggest season for us, the busiest season for us. And we have a bunch of initiatives going on. So we're really excited and uh, appreciate everyone supporting us along the way. See you next week.